All right, guys, welcome back. Um, today, we're gonna talk about, or we're gonna show you some things that I think we're ready to try with her. Um, leading up to this point, you've seen a few episodes, or you should recognize by now if you've watched ones prior to this, my awkwardness, if you will, or, or a little bit of uncomfortable, um, I'm just not real smooth when it comes to the idea of understanding the, the pigeon trap, the release, the timing, the perp, maybe the purpose. I, I think I understand the purpose of them. I don't always, I, I'm having a hard time like connecting those dots. So I have, and, and I'll explain a little bit more into that. So I, I really believe in the value of the wild bird. Like I think I've been taking her now, it's mid August. And for a couple weeks now, she's running the woods. It's, the woods are extremely thick. They're they're miserable to be in bugs, hot humidity, all that stuff. It's a jungle, but we're, we're getting some contacts with woodcock. We're getting some contacts with broods of grouse. It's serving as kind of scouting for us up by our cabin, but more importantly, it's just these opportunities for her to like connect dots. And <clears throat> you've seen some of the pigeon stuff that we've done. And I've gone back and forth on, should I, should I be doing more bird work? Should I be doing less bird work? And when I say bird work, I mean like training with pigeons. I think there's a, um, a limit to the return that you get on that. I think it, it diminishes over after you do it so long. I think there are certain things to be um, gained by pigeons. So, I, so I'm talking through like my mind where it's been bouncing back and forth for weeks now on what's the next step and what's the value and all this. I do think pigeons provide some value and I've dug in some more, um, watched some more videos um, on different people's approaches to big picture training of pointing dogs and you got the extremes from one end of the spectrum to the other as far as should you use pen birds and pigeons or should you use all wild birds and and everything in between and so I, I typically try to fall somewhere in the middle on most things and that's probably where I'm falling on this I do think there's some value in um, some more formal technical setups I've talked about that that's what we're gonna do today I've got a few pigeons planted um, to give you a recap, uh, it's been weeks since I was over by Jerry Coulter, but when I asked him, I said, well, what do you think is next? Because he asked me, what do you want to do? And I, I said, well, hell, I'd do the same thing we did last time that she didn't do that well. We'll plant a couple birds, we'll take her out, let her point them, flush them. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, it's more confidence building in me and understanding that she will point and hold. And So we did that. But one of the things he said to me that stuck is, I'd shoot a bird over her. I think you're ready to shoot a bird over her. And I thought, man, I don't think I'm ready. And maybe she was ready, but I don't know that I was ready. And so I feel like there's a lot of, it sounds very simple, put a bird in a, tra a trap or a release, let the dog point it, flush it, shoot it, let her pick it up, bring it back, uh, or try to anyway. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. And so before I jump into it, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to break it down piece by piece. So you saw her fumble on the trap the first time. She just stepped on the trap. So I don't want to launch it right now because her nose is on it. I don't think it was her fault. I think it was partially my setup and it was maybe partly her fault, but like there was a, when I say fault, it was really good chance for her to learn. So I do think she learned from it. I think I made a mistake by only having one bird out. Next time we put out two birds, we got a better result out of the second one. This is the third time. So, so the frequency of this is not great. I'm not doing this a lot, um, which is I think valuable to share with you because uh, maybe right or wrong, I, I think this is the approach that we're taking and it's coming with a lot of thought and probably overthinking it. But we're going to put some, so I put two birds out today and Jerry said to shoot a bird over her. And I, part of my hesitation was I hadn't shot the, the cap gun over her, the, you know, the starter pistol over her that much. And so, a few times she had heard it with birds, and I don't think she had any issue with it, but I just wasn't quite ready to shoot a bird over her yet. She had caught a pigeon. Um, I talked about that in a podcast. I talked about it with Jerry. She caught a pigeon. I wrote about it in an article. She caught a pigeon that I planted for the very first time, and I dizzied it and put it out, and she jumped it up and caught it, and I thought I ruined her and realized, no, I didn't ruin her, and Jerry said, you know what? That might have been good for her. So, like, 
it's this this roller coaster of mistake. Did I make a mistake? Did I, am I okay? Is she doing good? It's where we lead ourselves to here. So I'm gonna put the bird down. I got these birds down. I think she'll handle them okay. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. I've got this in my head, whereas she doesn't handle it well, I'm not gonna shoot the bird. Like my goal is to shoot the shoot a bird over her. That's my objective today. Have her point a bird and shoot it. I have two of them out because I'm gonna take her to the first one. If the first one isn't good, I'll have a second one to go to and try it again. If the second one isn't good, then I'll just be done and we won't we won't shoot a bird over her today. If the first one is good and we it goes as planned, which my, with my batting average right now, that's probably not likely, but if it goes as planned, I'll be done. I'm not gonna put her on the second bird. I'm just gonna pick her up, bring her back, and be done. So, come here. So, I'm giving you this vision of what my training plan is today, and then we're gonna see what happens with it. But there are a lot of parts and pieces to it. I'm gonna have this releaser um, in, my, in my hand. I'm gonna have the gun now that I gotta flush and shoot and shoot the bird and so there are there are quite a quite a few variables here today um, I'm gonna do my best I'm probably not gonna talk a lot to the camera I'm gonna try not to talk to the camera because I'm gonna try to focus on doing my job here and if we have to we can voice over stuff after but um, I'm not going to run her free before like a lot of times I feel like planted birds for me in the past where well there are opportunities for me to like replicate hunting I'm not doing that because I don't know that I believe I do a very good job with that. And I've taken her now and she pointed some really nice, I've got some great footage of her with my phone pointing some woodcock and handling them really well. So I'm not, I'm not going to learn from, I, I'm not going to gain anything from that with a couple planted pigeons here. What I am going to do is control the idea and be able to shoot them because I can't shoot a wild bird yet. It's not season. She needs to get that done before season. So I'm taking away this idea of like trying to get her to hunt, uh, trying to get her to find wild find birds and understand where birds are. No, I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm simply gonna heal her out around, get her downwind of these birds, work her into the first one with the hopes of like teeing it up for her to have a nice point. I'm gonna be patient, I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna pop the bird and I'm gonna shoot it. And then we're gonna see what she does with it. Because the bird that she had caught in her mouth, she killed, she was quite young, she was probably five, five months old maybe. She killed it, she, eventually brought it back to me, but she ran off with it. And then I turned and walked away from her and I turned it into just like a retriever drill. Eventually she did bring it to me. I did not, I thought about making a video prior to this with a cold game bird. I, I do that typically to get dogs to be sure they're not afraid of birds and they're comfortable with picking up birds. I don't think, there's no issue. She's, she'll pick up a bird. It's a matter of what she's gonna do with it when she picks it up. Retrieving right now, we've not put a lot of work into especially outside the little bit that we've done she's done okay um, but she's not a real natural retriever and i'm not really worried about it uh, i'm always going to have a lab at heel when i'm hunting with her so um, i'm just not concerned with that but we'll see I, if she picks it up and retrieves it it's just a bonus that's not what we're trying to achieve here we're trying to get her on a nice point on a planted bird bait, like training wheel type style flush it shoot it and maybe more for me to get the the flow of that down and have success. So we'll, I wanted to explain it because this is a, a lot of thought and a lot of me going back and forth and a lot of me not doing stuff because I was afraid to do stuff. And, and after watching this series of videos that I'll talk about in a podcast, um, I'm not gonna do it exactly the way they're doing it, but I have realized that the way they do it, and it's not that they're, I think they're wrong or anything, it's just I do things a little bit differently, uh, I think fit style-wise, but some of the things that, that I took from it, maybe some of the biggest things I took from it are just do stuff and adjust, do stuff and adjust, do stuff and adjust. And I can't get good at doing any of this stuff if I don't do it. Like I don't have the ability to adjust if I don't do it. So we're gonna take her out. I'm gonna take her under control, which is something I picked up from their video. They tee stuff up for their dogs all the time. Um, again, it goes back to the idea of the difference or separation between technical training and trying to uh, achieve or, or do some type of specific objective versus take her out in the woods and let her figure out wild birds. Like those are two very different things. And I think what has to happen is, is we gotta do them both. And then at some point we have to merge them together and start kind of overlapping them. And then that's where we start getting into this more, more combination of natural instinct stuff combined with some of the more formed shaped behaviors that I, 
I want or prefer in her. So um, we'll see how it goes today. Long explanation, but I thought it was necessary. So one of the things that I think is worth mentioning too, this is more of a technical thing. It's not necessarily specific to this drill, but so I, I have a buddy that has pigeons. They're just barn pigeons. They're not like bred homers or anything. But I've got the, I went and picked up a handful of them because I knew I wanted to shoot a few. I've got a few pigeons here that I've had for months. <clears throat> and we've used them in those launchers in earlier videos. And I have a return kind of one-way door into their coop. And they do home. I mean, I don't take them very far just, you know, on, on our property. But they do come back and they do end up going back in there. So what I, when I picked those pigeons up last night, I marked all the new ones. They're all kind of look the same. I marked the new ones with a, a zip tie on their leg. So for drills like this, I don't want to take the ones that I know are going to home um, because I'm going to shoot, shoot a bird. So these ones that I put in there, I'll leave them in there for several weeks and then I'll start taking them out one or two at a time and running some drills uh, as we potentially as we go along here into the early season. But what I'll end up doing is seeing if those those birds come back at home after several weeks of living there they got food they got water they got their friends are in there so but what i didn't want to do is shoot my two homers the ones that i know will home i didn't want to shoot them first so the different one difference is normally we would let her kind of quarter and and cast and work her way out let her air out here but on the way out to where we're going to to do this drill and i do think that there's, there's value in that, but then there's also this idea that she's going to be really loose, she's going to be really free running, she's gonna, I'm not going to have necessarily her focus the way I want it. So this is different than what we normally would do. So we're literally walking her out under control. I'm going to get her downwind. We're walking out around because the wind is blowing this, this way. So we're going to walk her around, get her downwind. And when I put her in to hunt, she's not going to have a whole lot of time to quote unquote warm up. It's gonna be, so I, I, and I'm not gonna do it on a check cord. Um, the video that I watched, they did a lot of kind of helping steer the dog on a check cord at times. Um, I'm not gonna do that. That's fine, I think for certain drills, I think that's fine. For this, it's not what I wanna do. I don't wanna to have to worry about handling a cord. You'll notice I'm letting her walk pretty loose on the lead. When I say loose, I mean not in good heel position. This isn't a heel drill. I'm not working on having her, if, if we were going for just a walk, I'd be a lot more stringent on, I want you to heel well and not be bouncing out on me. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's certainly sloppy, <clears throat> but that's all right. I also think another thing, another point is, as I was setting this up this morning, I put these birds out about 25 minutes ago I came back, I got her, I'm getting my stuff, I'm getting my gun out. She doesn't know what a gun is. She's never, she's never seen me carry a gun before. So it's not like she's cued in like my labs are when I get a gun, it's good things are coming. But I do think she senses my tension. I think she realizes, man, he's pretty nervous about what we're about to do and I think she knows we're going to work on stuff. I, I totally think the dogs get that. So I feel like as I get better and do more, more often, I'll start to relax a little bit. And if I relax a little bit, I think it's gonna make things a lot easier on the dog. I just think that my tension is probably a little stressful for her. So we'll come in here and I'll show these guys. I want to, the guys with the cameras don't even know where the birds are yet. Wind is hitting us per, pretty much perfect. So see where that tree is, guys. The, can't, the bird is like 15 yards further. I, I am gonna try to flush and shoot that way if I can, because I don't, I, part of the reason I wanted to put the birds on this end was to get further away from the shop and the house. So Logan, you're gonna wanna, I'm not gonna be able to get the bird probably. I'm gonna... I would, if I were you, I'd go in this little mode strip, left, yep, and walk up, because we're gonna come in this way. So I'd go up a little bit further, and then to the left-hand side. We're, the bird is the bird is in the right edge of this mode strip. Okay. Yeah, you could probably go right there, Ben. You're going to be really close. Like, you're very close to where the bird is. I might get up here and aim back. 
I just don't want you, yeah, because I, I don't want to shoot. And you're going to have to stay this side of me yep. to the back of me so that I want to shoot somewhere in this range. I don't want to shoot that way. So I just want to make sure. <laughs> so this, I don't think this is bad to show either at some point in some of this footage because this is a pain in the neck to try to figure out well, where do we put two cameras where do, and so here I am a guy that's not good at this in the first place because he's never done it and we're trying to do it with cameras it makes it a lot, a lot more challenging and then you start adding in the gun and now it's safety and all that stuff so we're I don't know it the more I've talked about it and talked about it with you guys the better I feel about it but I mean I've thought about this shit for weeks now figuring out how to do it and what way we could do it effectively because I, I i just think it's it's simple but there are some there's enough parts to it the other thing about it is, is that i picked up from this video is there's a lot of parts to it and the guy doesn't always work perfect for him either and he doesn't doesn't bother him like get what you can get out of it start over do you know do it again it's it reminds me of how repetitious we are with some of our retriever stuff where i feel like one of the big differences i think of between the pointing dogs and the retriever stuff is my my retriever stuff is so meticulous and so picky and so specific and these guys are just kind of free children let them run and let them let them develop natural and wild and i do think that that is a big part of it but i also think that there's probably a little bit more of this than i than i think and a little more value in it than I think. And it's just not to the degree that, that we're doing with our labs. So you're good, Ben? Yep. I'm probably talking super loud because of the earplugs, but you good? Yep. Now I want a little bit of control here, which is what I think comes back to obedience. But we're not going to turn it into a whole lot more than that. I got to remember, I'm going to have to push this button. Trying to think here how I'm gonna probably push the button and shoot. We'll, f we'll see how it goes. Okay. Now, is she touching scent? Maybe, maybe not. When it, we'll just let her work here. This is where I gotta get good at reading her. How far away she is. Yeah, she's got the bird. So when I look at her nose, I look at her head, I look at her body, she, I do believe she has it. The bird is quite a ways off. Now, my question is, is if I come in here, am I going to put pressure on her to, for her to move? I want to shoot this way, so I'm going to probably try to get behind her. And this is all, I'm talking through my head right now. I want to make the flush. I didn't want her to make the flush. I wanted to make the flush. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Here. 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 Good dog. Come on. Now we'll see what she does with that bird. Come on. Come on, let's go. Good dog, that's a good dog. Ben, if you want him, are you good there? Good girl, right here. Makina, bring here. Good girl. Oh, what you got? Come on. Come on. Come on, what you got? Bring it here. Bring that here, you old dog. Good dog, here. Makina, come on. Come on. Makina, come on, let's go. 
Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go, come on. Let's go, come on, let's go. Let a girl, yeah, let's go. Makina, come on, let's go. That a girl. A little confidence with picking it up. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. I think she actually wants to pin it to the ground. That a girl, here. Good job. Good job. Good girl. Again, I have zero concerns with her retrieving. I don't want to turn it into keep away. Good job. Good job, here. Good dog. Good dog, what have you got? Good, come on. Good, here, here, here. Good dog, come on. Here go, here go, here go, here go, come on. Come on. Good dog. Good girl, what you got? Here, good dog. Here, good dog, oh, here. That's a good dog. So she's not super, I mean, I don't mind that at all. Good, 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 good. Here, here. Good job. Good job, she got on it pretty good. Here, here. Just out of curiosity with her. Come here, come here. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. whoa. I mean, I got more than I needed to get out of this session, but just with the opportunity here, yeah. and to try to maybe pick up a little bit on what we just did there with the retrieve part of it. Let's see what this does here. I can't. Good girl, come on. And a girl here. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Good girl. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, let's go. Makina here. Makina here. Come on, let's go. Add a girl. Add a girl. The recall's there. Here. Good job. Recall's there. Here, 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 here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come here. Good job. Here, here, here. Here. Come here. Come here. She's hot. Having fun. Good. That's no problem. Like I said before, the retrieve for me is like the least of my worries. So like I'm feeling real good about that. Like I, I'm very happy with it. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised at how far out she picked that bird up. Like she got, she had, now I, the bird had been there 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So it's probably quite a scent pool there. Um, I look at that and I go, I just kind of want to call it a day. Like I, I thought that was just really good. Like I, my instinct says, go point that next one and shoot it. But I have to think about like, what are my objectives here? What was I trying to do? I'm trying to just get a bird shot over here. I was trying to get a point, be able to walk past have me create the flush, shoot the bird, let her experience that, let her put her mouth on it, do all that stuff. And we got that. So if I go and do the second bird now and it doesn't go very well, then where do I, where am I and where do I end it? So I, I feel like I'm talking myself out of going to the second bird and doing it um, just because I'll take a big, I'll take a good win. And, and not necessarily be greedy. I think there's a saying, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered or something like that. So we're just gonna be, be good with one and uh, we can do this again if we want to. Um, I don't know how much value, we're not getting a lot of value out of it from a pointing standpoint. She picked up scent, she pointed it way better than last time. Um, was my setup better? Quite possibly. Um, is she better? Probably. Uh, has has in between the last time and this time what has happened she's run wild birds for four days five days maybe and picked up and pointed them and she didn't even do that good in the beginning 
but as the, by the last day, by the last run of the last day, she was looking very good. I was really happy. So um, we kind of inserted it into here. And now it's the, the, the idea is not to get the dog to point. I do think that I'd, there was value in me being able to clearly walk past her. There was uh, obvious value in me being able to shoot the bird. There was value in her being able to get on the bird. I thought she marked it pretty well. I was, I, you know, I don't know when she broke. I don't know if she broke. She must have broke when I pushed the button. Um, so I thought, well, that I didn't know because we've not done that yet. So there clearly was no inter no problem with the gunfire. Um, the retrieve wasn't great. No big deal. Um, what I like was she didn't pick the bird up and run off to Timbuktu with it either. She didn't lay down and eat it. Uh, she mouthed it and kind of pinned it to the ground. And can I get her to retrieve? Yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to. Uh, do I need to or want to right now? Not really. Like least of my concerns is retrieving right now. Um, get her on more birds, let her point. Get her on more birds, let her be staunch. Get her on more birds, let her find them. I think that's the biggest thing I'm trying to do now is get her to find birds. And we're not going to be able to do that here. So. I'm gonna pick that last second bird up and um, be really satisfied, real happy with it. Good, good girl.